Hey, it's Tuesday the 21st. We are rolling on past the equinox and into the staging for Pluto moving into Aquarius on Thursday. Hi, Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. We're going to do something a little different today. This is going to be unconventional. But when you have Uranus in the third house of communication of your whole sign chart, yeah, you don't apologize for that. (laughs) How did we come up with fun astrology in the first place? Before we get to this Pluto information that I found, let's talk about the one aspect today happens at high noon. The moon moves into Aries after a whopping four minute void, of course, that's Eastern time. So if you're working today, do all your goofing off, all your social media surfing and all of that before noon, because this afternoon you're going to want to get some work done. Now, when is the new moon? Well, that's right after it moves in there, obviously, not before, because the new moon is in Aries. It happens at 1.23 p.m. Again, see, we've got the powerful creating going on because we have the tailwind of the equinox behind us. We have the sun and the moon together. And I tell you what, I couldn't think of probably a more important day to take some time to create intentionally what you want in the future than this day right now. I have been amazed over the last 18 months or so. It's just we've been following this and then pairing it with what's going on in our world. How the sky has given us these little clues. And you really could only get there by looking at the chart as closely as we do here that these little windows of opportunity to exercise these energies, these gifts from above, these energetic blessings that so many people are missing, but we are consciously living, and when the opportunities present, like today, we jump on it. New, big, powerful, new moon creations under the equinox in Aries. Run it out. How far do you want it to go? Aries is the first sign. You have 12 more to follow. You can pick anything. I was actually meditating myself on this yesterday, and even without looking at this for today's podcast, I was thinking, you know, this is one of those times that you can really take a look at the next period of time in your life. You want to look at six months, a year, 18 months, three years, five years. You've got the whole chart, all of the aspects of our lives, all of the pockets and areas of our life. You want to create something around money? Career, relationship, dealing with karma, planning, or expanding a family, it's all in front of you. Choose wisely what you intend. You just might get it. Now, let's take a look at Thursday, because we are in this applying energy to Pluto moving into Aquarius. We have been in it for a long time. This is not anything new. In fact, we're really at the culmination of it. But I found something interesting as I was thinking about this ingress, this activity on Thursday, that Pluto takes five times to cross into Aquarius beginning Thursday, but it will not finally cross into Aquarius until November 19th, 2024. Now, if you've been listening to the Old Soul, New Soul podcast with Robert, one of the things that we have emphasized over there, and everybody teaches this, this is Astrology 101. That when you have a planet sitting on an ingress like this, changing signs, changing houses, stationing to go into retrograde, stationing to come out of retrograde, these are the amplified times when that planet's characteristics are magnified. Another critical degree is 29 degrees in the chart. My son is a 29 and 50 something minute baby, so I understand by just observing him the straddle of being between two signs. So for the next 20 months, Pluto is going to be straddling Capricorn and the very early degrees of Aquarius. We'll talk more about that dynamic between now and Thursday. What I want you to just hold right now is five times over 20 months. So I went back and looked at, well, what happened when Pluto went into Aquarius the last time, which was 1777? The United States was about nine months old from the Declaration of Independence. That time, Pluto took five times over 20 months to enter Aquarius from Capricorn. What happened during that time? The American Revolutionary War was already underway. And within that time that Pluto was in Aquarius, the French Revolutionary War also erupted in 1792 and engulfed most of Europe. Back on the United States side, 
there were all the firsts of a new nation. Once independence was finally won in the early 1780s, then we had the election of the first president and the first bank and the dollar and the stock exchange and the post office and the first university. And all of this happened under the revolutionary ingress of Pluto in Aquarius. Then I came up to modern times, and I went to Leo because that encompasses most everybody alive today. So that goes back to 1937, once again, five times over 21 months. And what happened during Pluto and Leo but World War II, and then eventually the rebuilding of Europe and Japan. We also had the Korean War during that time. Next was Pluto in Virgo. That happened first in October of 1956. And what happened then? The Vietnam War. Mass rebellion and protest. The assassination of a president. The assassination of a civil rights leader. The assassination of that president's brother who was running for president. We also went to the moon, and it was the beginning of the Watergate episode. Then it shifts, because for Libra, which was 1971... Pluto only took three times crossing over from Capricorn to Aquarius over about nine months to finally enter the next sign. And of course, Libra would bring peace, wouldn't it? It would bring an end to the war, and it did. Also brought an end to the Nixon administration, but that's another topic. The women's rights movement began under Pluto and Libra. Does that surprise you? So did the environmental movement. That one probably should have been under Virgo probably was happening, just culminated under Libra. Pluto in Scorpio, 1983, three times again over 10 months. Now, the one thing about this one is this is when 9-11 happened. In fact, under Scorpio, there was a theme of death in the world during that time, the collapse of communism, the death of the Soviet system, AIDS, death, Chernobyl, death, the Challenger explosion, death. Then Pluto entered Sagittarius for the first time in 1995, again three times over 11 months. So we've been in this pattern of three times. We had the Persian Gulf War during that time, but apartheid was repealed. Nelson Mandela was elected president of South Africa. The Oklahoma City bombing, the Harry Potter series was launched under this transit of Pluto. And so was the tech revolution that we have now. The cell phone was announced to the world by Stephen Jobs in 2007. Then Pluto and Capricorn, the one that we are ending now. It first happened on January 25, 2008, and once again was just three times over ten months. I'm going to not mention all of this for the sake of time, but I made a long list of old structures that were changed. Among them in the United States, the old health care model. How about the traditional over-the-air broadcast delivery of television and programming has completely changed. Ways of meeting and hooking up for dating and relationships changed. Ways of staying when you travel changed. How about landline telephones or mom-and-pop retail, sadly? And obviously we can't mention this transit without saying that the election of Barack Obama as President of the United States erased any doubt in any young child's mind, whether or not they could grow up and make a significant impact on the world, especially because of anything related to their heritage, their skin color, or anything else. With Pluto under Capricorn, that glass ceiling was shattered, and obviously there's one more to go. And under revolutionary Aquarius, that one is likely to fall as well. So now we're back to 1777, Pluto enters Aquarius after five times crossing over zero degrees Aquarius. My argument is, as you look back over history, the times that it took five times to cross versus three times to cross were more significantly revolutionary in the world. And obviously, the one that happened last when it moved into Aquarius, the planet of revolution, already had a revolutionary war underway. So the implication is, maybe whatever this is going to be, is going to be a big one. It's going to be impactful. And yes, there is a history as you look back on these fivers of war. But then something really cool happened. Yesterday, a friend sent me a video of somebody who was talking about the new consciousness. 
And there were some things in the video that I'm not fully bought into, but the message of the video was that by choice, we can be headed toward much higher times, higher energy, changes of old structures. I mean, think about the way we do things now after just since 2008 with Pluto and Capricorn. I remember a dial-up telephone, where rotary dial, and I remember the first time I ever saw a push-button phone. It was in a bank in a mall in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I said, Mom, what is that? Can you imagine the structures that are going to change under revolutionary Aquarius? Astrology is ruled by Aquarius. Can you imagine the spiritual changes that are likely to take place under this aspect? Think the high ground and stay with the high ground as you watch the world around you fight and grapple to hang on to using a rotary telephone. It's laughable. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. <laughs> it's like, yes, frame it up that way. Oh, these poor people, they're fighting a war in order to use a rotary telephone. Shame, shame. Meanwhile, you can dial telepathically, energetically, because that veil was also lifted. All right, you guys, I'm going to slide out of here. That I No way I could do that in five minutes. No way. But I think it was so worth framing up. Big changes ahead. How you experience them is up to you. If you would rather dial, you know what was the thing about the rotary phone is when you had four zeros in the number, like, you know, or 3,900 or whatever, and you had to dial it and wait for that zero to come all the way back. <laughs> no way that would work today. Be more hammers to phones than you can. <laughs>